I remember a while back watching a TV show on humility. I think it was on The Virtues or something like this. It was, uh, I think it was on PBS, where um, the sort of self-annihilating characteristics of what we would call virtues become evident when they become ends in themselves. Uh, the um, the case in this uh, particular episode was humility and. Uh, it examined several societies in which humility was valued very highly, um, where being self-effacing, humble, modest, um, non-self-promoting, non-self-advertising, um, and obviously so, um, appearing humble in everyone else's eyes becomes something of a competition. <laughs> um, Humility becomes a source of pride, as it were, because you try to out-humble each other, um, where you try to show everybody just how self-effacing you are. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, of course, what ends up happening is people start to take pride in how humble they are, and they, tr you know, they start to um, look down on other people for their extravagance and their pride and their world worldliness and, and this sort of thing. And you get that sort of weird um, paradox of, you know, the, the Puritanism that uh, you know, it just sort of tends to annihilate itself when it becomes an end in itself. Too much humility becomes pride. Now, <clears throat> the interesting thing about guilt is it, if you ask me, it goes kind of the same way because you would think that feeling guilt is a useful thing in order to prevent us from harming something else or doing something unethical or immoral. Um, so, as long as, like humility, you understand why you're doing it and that it's, it's not an end in itself, I suppose it can be fairly harmless. But once you, once you place guilt sort of up there with something that you have to sort of pursue as an end in itself, you, it soon becomes apparent what happens. Um, you're playing with fire that you'd better know how to control, like humility. You decide that you're going to be humble above all else, and you're going to be more humble than anyone else, and you're going to be an extremely humble person when compared to other people. Same thing happens to um, guilt. Um, I'm going to be an extremely moral person, ex an extremely ethical person, because um, I want to have a clear conscience. I want to be um, I want to be guilt-free. Okay, well, you, the more you expunge, the more you realize there's more to expunge. Um, I travel very frequently, and the more I travel, the more I realize how many places I've never seen and I never will see. Um, it tends to have that effect once it becomes an end in itself. Same thing with guilt you're always going to find um, something to feel guilty about when guilt becomes an end in itself. And what inevitably happens is you start to search and battle guilt um, in, a, in a way that ends up defeating the original purpose of, uh, or the original utility of guilt that you employed to begin with. For example, you have to understand why you're employing guilt. Um, you're employing guilt because you want a clear conscience, because you want harm reduction, etc., whatever you want to, you want to avoid uh, bad things taking place. You want to be an ethical person. You want to use guilt for a reason. Okay, <clears throat> now you look around and you see all these people doing all these horrible things. Okay, they should feel guilty you should feel guilty about not trying to stop them. Okay, well then the next thing you do, you start coercing people into not doing things that, uh, you know, are going to add more guilt because if I, you know, the old conundrum of uh, for evil to triumph, it's only necessary for good men to do nothing. Well, that's all very simple as long as we know who the good men are. That's never an obvious thing. Let's say that I'm a good man and I see bad going on and I don't do anything about it. Well, I should feel guilty because I'm facilitating the triumph of evil. 
Okay, so I'm going to go do something about it. Okay, well, <laughs> that's all very well, but the problem is, of course, that presupposes my ability to identify evil, that I know what evil is, and that it's very simple. So, in order for me to determine what evil is, uh, and to, to determine where the evil is in the world, I have to, um, I have to project guilt. I have to say, there's the evil in order for me to fight it. I have to know what it is. I have to be able to identify it in order for me to be a good man that doesn't do nothing when evil is taking place. So I go out and I fight evil based on the assumption, of course, that I can actually, that I actually have that capacity to identify evil and to actually know what to do about it. Um, now, of course, you see what happens. You become a persecutor yourself because, you know, the Salem witch trials, um, the killing fields of uh, Chunyek in democratic Kampuchea, uh, the Gulag, Auschwitz, all these things are presupposed upon the notion that we can identify the evil people and do something about it. That I'm seeing uh, this terrible, intolerable condition of the world, and I'm trying to be a good man by not, uh, not, not doing anything, uh, in order for evil to triumph. I take that. For evil to triumph, it's only necessary for good men to do nothing. I take that, and I take it to heart, and I say, I want to do something. I want to stop the spread of evil. Um, so in order to do that, I end up doing evil things. It's kind of crazy, uh, and it's the way that ethics can kind of annihilate themselves. Um, and I think that it's the way the self-annihilating character of guilt because when you take guilt, which is a fundamentally nasty thing, and you decide that its elimination is more important than anything else, like humility, it inevitably turns in upon itself, or it turns against itself. I decide that because I want to be a good person and avoid guilt, I want to fight evil in the world, and I do things that actually end up causing more evil. Um, that's the kind of self-annihilating ethical system that we have. Um, now, I'm not really saying that we should actually throw it all down the toilet, but I'm just saying that we have to understand the limits of our ethical system and where the paradoxes and the flaws are. Because, you know, you take little things like if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, which is the same thing as, you know, in order for evil to triumph, it just means that good men must do, you know, should do nothing. Um, well, okay, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Well, then we're all part of the problem because there's so many problems out there that we're not part of the solution of that we're part of the problem by default and inevitably. Guilt. Um, if we feel guilt about anything, we have to feel guilty about everything because what things out there are we not trying uh, actively to stop? I'm not saying we abandon ethics, and I'm not saying that we abandon guilt. But we've got to understand where these things will go if we take them to their logical, I guess, conclusion. Humility becomes pride. Guilt becomes evil, doesn't it? Thank you.